Hi, uh, welcome to my channel. Uh, I'm going to start um, doing some work on the NC750X. It's, um, to be honest, I didn't use it much last year. Um, so I've got a Royal Enfield Himalayan and I've uh, been used that mostly and this has just been parked up. So I think this year we're going to use it a bit more. So I'm going to go right through the bike, servicing the works like. Um, I think what we're going to do start today is going to do rear suspension uh, linkage service and I'm going to replace the standard shock absorber with uh, an Olin's. So um, I'll get the camera sorted, we'll move down here so, and hopefully you might be able to see the linkage and everything as I take it to pieces. And then we'll go to the bench, service all the bearings, grease everything up, check everything's okay and fit the old in shock. Okay? Right. I hope you can see all this on the camera. This is the dog legs off the suspension. This is the bottom link and obviously this is the shock absorber. Uh, so what we're going to do is strip this down. We're going to take this bottom link out, uh, the dog legs off, take the shock absorber out, then we will uh, strip all the bearings out, make sure they're clean, repack them with the grease, and then we're going to fit the old in shock absorber in place of the stock one. Okay, right. I have already cracked the bolts off, because obviously we're filming, um, and there's nothing worse than uh, when you're filming, if it's going to go wrong, it's going to go wrong then. So, uh, I sort of got the art job half done. In case there's any stuck bolts. <laughs> All right. All right, that's the dog legs off. See them in my hands. What you do to do this, I've jacked the bike up. I haven't got a centre stand on this bike, it never come with one. So I've got a piece of wood under the where the centre stand would fit, and it's on the adjustable jack here. You jack the bike so the weight of the rear wheel is just on the floor, so it, it's just taking its own weight and you'll, you'll know if it's right or not. As soon as it's right, the bolts are sliding in and out, easy. If you're wrong, you've either got it too high, too low, and the weight's on the, the pivots. Just get this uh, back one out. It's not the easiest of jobs to film this, I'm afraid, because it's actually stuck under the bike, of course. But we do what we can. That's the bolt out. Right, this here, that's your bottom link. So what I'm going to do, we'll put this on the bench. Uh, what I'm going to do now is, uh, well, no, I'll try first, see if I can get the, the shock absorber out. Uh, let me see. I'll just show you something else first. Oh. Right, the top shock absorber bolt is behind this panel. Uh, now to get this panel off, believe it or not, it's, it's quite a job. You've got to take a lot more of the plastics off to get it off. But if you take the bolt out here, which I have, this, put that back, you just flip this out at the bottom like that. There's enough leverage on this just to pull this backwards to get, I don't know whether you can see it, the, that hole in the frame, you get an extension with a 17 mil socket on the end in there and that will go with the ratchet on the end, you'll just get to the top bolt. Without, 
it's not damaging your plastics. So uh, we'll get that bolt out uh, and then we'll drop the shock out and I'll put it on the bench. So I'll switch the camera off while I do get the shock out because you're not going to see anything. Uh, and I'll turn it back on when we've got the shock on the bench. Okay. All right. As we can see, got the stock shock. It's out now. It's on the bench. Um, there's, there's actually nothing wrong with this. It's uh, seals are good, springs are good, works as good as it can really. Um, but the reason I was replacing it was I live in Bulgaria. The roads here are pretty bad, uh, and I, I find with this that. It, ha it can't, it's got no way of adjusting the damping, you can only adjust the preload. And uh, it quite gets quite bouncy. The roads here, our problem is in the winter we get temperatures uh, sort of uh, minus to minus 26 is the worst I've seen. Uh, and what it does, it actually blows the tarmac in the road to pieces, you end up with big potholes all over. But in the summer, our summers are from cool day, it'll be 30. But it, in direct sunlight, it can get up to 50 degrees. And what it does, it melts the tarmac. Now, one of the countries that borders Bulgaria is Turkey. And it, it's a bit like China. It's where all the cheap stuff comes over in the wagon. So there's literally thousands of wagons every day, I would say, running. Because we're the route from Turkey into Europe. And what they do with the road, when it's hot, they make the road like a wave like this. And what I was finding with this, when it was hitting the, the dips hard, this would compress and then it would like spring back. And then he was getting a bouncing effect and it could, just because it got no damping. If this shock absorber had come out with the, the adjustable on the bottom for the damping, this would have been fine. It would have been a mint shock absorber with no complaints. Now, I think for a lot of people, they can say, well, I ain't got no trouble with mine. Uh, it depends what you're running on really reasonable roads it works fine but uh, I did uh, in Romania last summer the transfer garrison pass which the road is pretty bad pretty rough and I was loaded up with my camping gear uh, and I must admit I've got, I've got to sort that out this year I, uh, I take everything by the kitchen sink I've, I've got to sort myself out and learn to travel lighter but obviously camping gear is on the back of your bike so it was bottoming out this this spring was bottoming out and there's, there's nothing I could do about it I ended up having to slow down a lot a really lot to sort of get it to cope with it so I've got my Olins uh, I'll show you that in a moment so that's the reason why we're going to replace this today uh, it's, it's just not up to the purpose of where I live Right, let's move that one out of the way. Right, this is my Olin's. This is a STX46. Now, it comes standard with a 120 pound spring. That's this one here. That's what they recommend for this bike. Now, yes, I've got damping on the bottom and you preload on the top. But with this spring, I was still suffering a little bit the same problem I had with that shock absorber. What was happening with this, with my camp on my own and the bike, beautiful. It's like a magic carpet it is. But when I was loaded up, this was bottoming out. The spring was actually going coil bound. Uh, it just wasn't heavy enough for carrying my camping gear and running on the roads I run. You know, a lot of the roads are mountain roads here and they are pretty rough like so what I did uh, I took the spring off myself <coughs> so I got the tools to do it but this spring the one I've got is a 150 pound spring and you can physically see by the diameter of the metal it's a big jump this uh, and also the adjuster on this is the preload is at the top top of the thread when I had this on this was about oh, a good third of the way down so what this does, the spring's wide open, if you want to call it that. So it gives us the maximum travel. Yet where I've got the preload set on here, uh, 
this is about right because what it did I, I couldn't get the spring on I just it's so strong I just couldn't do it so I sent it off to the Olin specialist where I originally bought this and sent them the spring uh, and they fitted it for me sent it back and they set the preload they said start here for this spring this is where you're going to be now I'm going to fit the shock uh, and then in a separate video I'll uh, do the sag on the suspension which is most important um, you can't just wind it up and down if it's a bit soft because it, it, it just doesn't work like that but so what we're going to do we're going to fit this this back in the bag because this is pretty useless to us now right so that's the shock I'm going to fit right servicing the suspension this is the bottom link now if we push these out that's your bearing the bearing surface in the bearing surface I don't know whether or not you can you can see in there that's the cages there's two big cages in there with needle rollers now I do take them out every year this and grease them so they are okay what you should do check if they're clean possibly wash them out I won't do it on this because this is this is spotless I say this bike was hardly used last year besides going to Romania I, d I didn't hardly do anything with it it's just been parked up um, now what I'm going to do is going to pack them with grease anyway Put the grease in there run it around the bearing you don't have to fill the hole or anything like that because you just push it out when you push the inner bearing part in both sides right the bearing and that pushes back into the needle rollers nice and slick it just pops through and that lovely there's no no play in anything the cages are all fine needle rollers are okay yeah there's no water or rust got in it that's why it's 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 well worth it doing this every year otherwise you're gonna have to knock them out and replace the bearings so that's that one then it's the same with this just pull that out you can see on here there's no damage spotlessly clean as good as new and this bike's done 45,000 kilometers now which for under NC 750 it's only barely running <laughs> um, now that's in good nick so yet again check your bearings it's a bit difficult to see on the camera but no looks good yeah they're turning nice yeah they've still got the grease in from last year but like i say forty-five thousand kilometers suspension bearings don't need replacing that's pretty good going um yeah i know it's a honda i know it's an nc 750 they never need much do they right, push that back in right that's that one done there's no play up and down or nothing so that should go together quite nicely right what I'll do now, I'll turn the camera off. Uh, I'm going to grease all of my ends. I'm going to fit the shock absorber in the top bolt because there's no point me trying to show you on the camera. You, you can't see anything under there. Uh, so once I've got this the bolt in here, I'll just tighten this up with my fingers. So this is in place. Then we will replace this, replace the dog legs, build it all up then uh, I've got to torque all the bolts up and show you how it all goes back together there is underneath one more bearing uh, to take out um, we'll do that when I get under there okay so I'll turn the camera off now and then we'll sort it out right <laughs> got the top bolt in on the shock absorber bit of a pain that is but uh, we've got it in right and you can see this this here is uh, this is the bearing that fits on the bottom of the swinging arm. So, same as uh, the link. Pull this piece out. Check the bearings. Yeah, it's still got grease from last year, but we're gonna 
re redo it again. It's one of these jobs. Once you've done it a few times, it's uh, pretty pretty straightforward, worth doing. Because believe me, if you have to try to knock these bearings out of here, you'd have to swing an arm out, wheel out, swing an arm in over. It's a, a right pain. All right, we've checked this. No damage at all. This is just just as good as new. Slides in there. Oh, lovely. Yep. Right. Grease off my hands. Right. Bottom link. We have to grease this up, as you saw. Need to get this piece in first. This is a iron key bolt. Gods are with me. It's gone straight in. <laughs> Let's just pop a nut on there. I've got that bolt in there with a the nut on. I need uh, the shock absorber bolt at the bottom now. The hole in shock has a spacer in here. Got it lined up right. And a spacer in this side. actual fact this hole in shock is a uh, fits quite a few bikes uh, Ducati because I had one of these in a 796 hypermotard um, they're listed for uh, quite a lot of the bikes you match the length up you can have whatever spring you want on so it's like a bit of a, a multi-purpose shock but brilliant absolutely brilliant they are Right, enough waffling. Let's uh, get the job done. Not on the bottom of the shock. Now, dog bones. Now, this will see whether we've got it lined up or not. Right, I'll slide that in the top. This should line up with the bottom. Oh, God's with us. <laughs> uh, I'll get this right way around. Another one on. Oh, beautiful. Put that on. Right. Now, just for the sake of the camera, it's all bolted together now. Now, I've got to torque it all up, so I've got to take the dog legs up because I can't get to the shock absorber bolt. Now, I think off the top of my head, I will check. Uh, all the bolts and nuts on these are 44 Newton meters, but so I will check. Um, I will put it in the video for you. So what I'm going to do now is uh, I'll stop the camera again. Uh, so I've got to take the dog legs out. Then I'll torque all the bolts up and the top bolt as well. Then I'll let you have a look at it. Okay. Right. Uh, well, I've got all the bolts back in. Uh, what I'm going to do. Uh, I've talked up the awkward looking ones. Uh, I've just got the last bolts to, to talk up. Put this here so you can see it. So it's not the easiest of jobs because I'm trying to film under the bike. And it's pitch black dark doesn't help. <laughs> uh, right, so look. I've got this bottom one to finish off. 44 newton meters, I did check, it's correct. I'm 
And there we go. This one. There we go. All right. That's all the bolts uh, tightened up. Just got the panel to fit back in. I'll pop this screw back in here. I'll tighten that up. I'll uh, take it off the stand then for you. Uh, even though the spring's increased to 150, um, it should still be nice and plush. Uh, not stiff and uh, I think you'd be surprised how, how plush it will be. Uh, it gives me extra capacity to carry more. Uh, gives me extra travel on the spring, believe it or not, which is a good thing. Right, um, I'll get this just finished off and then uh, I'll get her off the stand and then we can have a look at her. Right, uh, it's all back together now. I've talked all the bolts up, uh, it's all set. Uh, like I said, even though the spring's a £150 spring in this, it, it isn't going to make the suspension harsh or rock solid. Uh, just with my hand pressure, supple as anything. Feels similar to what, uh, like a, a, an off-road bike, motocross bike. It's got nice soft travel. Uh, Oh, that's beautiful. You can see the front. This this model's got the SDB SDB valves in it. Uh, four coil I've worked out which is best for it for me anyway. Um, I put four hundred milliliters in each leg of seven and a half weight. Uh, five weights too thin. Uh, the forks was up and down like this. Um, ten weight, it's too heavy. It makes the forks too slow. It's like on these rough roads we got here, which are like this. Uh, the suspension can't keep up with the bumps. So, but seven and a half with four hundred milli milliliters of oil in just works perfect. That is really nice. Obviously now I've got plenty of adjustment on. Um, the preload without compressing the spring too much and also got uh, multiple adjustments on the, the damping on the bottom which on the old ones is easy to do there's no messing about with the screwdriver or it's just a click 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 one click makes a huge difference on it huge difference it's like i say this has been parked up nearly all last year i, I did go to romania on it uh, the transvaga but I rested a year over in my Himalayan and uh, really I've got to either ride it this year or sell it so I think hopefully we're going to try and ride it so I'm going to say I'm, if you like the video I'll go we'll be doing more videos I'm going to do the tappets on it full service uh, I should go right through it um, so I hope you like the video I hope it's useful to you uh, I don't know what the filming was like underneath it's very difficult I'm still learning the camera like it's not as easy as you think it would be um, but if you did like it if you'd uh, subscribe click like any comments any questions put them in the comments below uh, I'll answer any questions or if you think I haven't done something right tell me so um, most of the work I've done on the Himalayan and it's gone really well the filming in the comments so I hope it's going to go well with the, the Honda and say so most of my videos I should be working now till spring doing jobs on this to get her ready so hope to see you again cheers